Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again this morning for worship. We are celebrating today the third Sunday of Easter, and we'll continue in the Easter season for a few more weeks until Pentecost, which is May 23rd. And on that day, we will be celebrating the affirmation of faith with the confirmation students, uh, sometimes called Confirmation Sunday. And they will be, uh, will be live streaming it from outdoors with the confirmation students and families gathered, uh, gathered there and uh, live streaming to, to the rest of the congregation. And so we look forward to that and we look forward to the time when we can come together uh, here at Bethel, probably outside for a while, and gradually working into uh, worship indoors and gathering uh, in person in, into the uh, weeks and months ahead. So again, stay with us. We're glad to have you with us today. Uh, we begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Don and everyone out on the internet. As Don mentioned, today is the third Sunday of Easter and we're happy to have you joining us this morning. Today we'll be talking about fulfilling God's mission. I believe that a manifestation of that mission is for us to be actively involved in doing life together. As we continue to discern how to just do that, our COVID team will be meeting tomorrow night to talk about how we'll continue to craft our in-person guidelines to reflect the CDC and county rules, as well as the comfort level of our congregation. Make sure to stay tuned for more info. Last week, I shared a video by Dana Steinke letting us know how to support our local fruit and vegetable growers and the neonatal intensive care unit at Valley Medical Center. I wanna show you her video invite again so you can pick up your freshly grown treats next Sunday. Take it away, Dana. Hello, my name is Dana and I'm president of the Quantum Auxilia Leo Charitable Club. First of all, I would like to thank you for your support with last year's fruit sale. It was a big success and the VMC Foundation really appreciated your contributions and I hope you enjoyed the fruit. Now we are going to do it again. We have another opportunity for the Bethel family to enjoy some fresh fruit while contributing towards a worthy cause. I have contacted a vendor who will sell us farm fresh fruit. I would really appreciate your generous support of our fundraising activity to help the Leo Club raise money for the Valley Medical Center Neonatal Intensive Care Unit to help premature babies. In order for you to make your purchases, we have set up a Google form to be sent out in the weekly church email, and you can see the link here as well. All orders will be due by April 22nd, and our vendor will deliver the orders to the Bethel parking lot on April 25 at 4 p.m. With each order, we are asking for a donation of $3, which will go to the VMC NICU. Thank you in advance for ordering fresh fruit from our local farmers and supporting our charitable cause. Thanks again, Dana. I'm standing here in our sanctuary now and would like to thank Carson Faria and Kathleen Pedraza for spending the day here last week doing a deep cleaning. It really looks great. Thank you so much. Now let's see what Amanda has to say about what's going on for our Kid Connection families. Good morning. We have our Kid Connection Sunday School that met this morning at 10 a.m. by Zoom, and we will have it next Sunday at 10 a.m. by Zoom as well but it will actually be our last Sunday school for the school year. In celebration for everything that we have done together and been through together, we will have our Ice Cream Sunday Fun Day on May 16th. And I will have reservation spots for people to sign up for to come at different times. And we will do this physically distant. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. The kids are really excited to be on the playground. So make sure you sign up for your spot as soon as you can, reach out to me. And then our third through fifth grade youth group uh, will not meet today at 1 p.m., but we will meet next Sunday at 1 p.m. by Zoom. And that will actually be our last uh, Zoom gathering for this group as well for the school year. But we will have some physically distant events coming up that um, will be really fun as well. Then our parent Kid Connection Fellowship group We'll meet today at uh, 2 p.m. by Zoom, and we will meet through May. I'm also really excited to share that our Kid Connection Treasured Saturdays are just 
like just around the corner and our first one is May 22nd. So if you are a Kid Connection family and you haven't had a chance to sign up yet, please do just reach out to me. All right, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Amanda. Please check out the Bethel website to get info on events and activities for all other age groups. Now please join in our opening song, Holy Spirit.
Please join in the prayer of the day. Holy God, we give thanks that you often reveal yourself to be different from our expectations. When we long for the love we have known in the past, our eyes are dimmed to the beauty you reveal to us now. As your first followers struggle to see how a suffering Savior could be the Messiah, we strain to recognize you still today. Come, Holy Spirit, make yourself known in the study of Scripture, in our songs of praise, and especially in the grace and love we offer one another. Make yourself known in every friend we have yet to meet in your good and blessed name. Amen. Thanks, Scott. I think it's super cool that our worship today is being led from Cupertino, Santa Clara, Gilroy, and even Montana. As we worship together, reach out just as far and wide to share the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amanda Sawyer here with BLKC News. And I've got a question that I'm going to ask the people here at Bethel Lutheran Church in Cupertino. And that question is, what feeds them? Here we go. Hi, Amanda. So what feeds me are uh, new ways that we found to be community during this last year. Uh, super excited to see people on little screens and see their faces. So even though we couldn't see faces in person, to see them on screens was great. Also really uh, being intentional about what we spend our time doing and the things that we, people we spend time with and the things that are important. So those are two things. I feel fed when I play soccer. I feel fed when I'm with my friends. What? Yes, yes, oh, all right. I just got a notification that we have someone just down the street in Sunnyvale who also wants to share how they are fed. Maybe we'll have to try him later. Hi, what feeds me is being able to put a check mark by something on my list, completion, getting something done. That's what feeds me. Well, and that is definitely another way to get fed. Well, there are several ways that I actually do feel fed. And one is when I am with my family. One is when I'm with my Kid Connection kids. And the last two are when I really pay attention to and I spend time uh, listening to and talking to God. And that's in my prayer time, in my devotional time. And I also really love worship. And I especially really enjoy the music and the messages. And there you have it, folks. 
we have found out what feeds some of the people here at Bethel Lutheran Church. What feeds you? The first lesson is from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. And the man referenced in the very first part is a man that was lame and was just healed. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us, as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man, whom you see and know, was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah, who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. The Gospel is taken from Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 through 49. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do, you, why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Here ends the Gospel reading. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Again, God, we come together to consider your word a word of life, a word of hope, a word of promise. Be with us now. Let your spirit guide us and teach us again this morning. Teach us that we may hear of your unconditional love for all of your people. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable on thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning, when we consider the readings together that you have heard a short time ago, a reading from Acts chapter 3, from Luke chapter 24, I want you to think about three questions, and I will come back to each one of those. But first, I want to share with you and ask you to think about these three questions. First of all, what do you believe about the resurrection, about the risen Christ? Second, what do you need to help build trust more than it already is, or to build a strong trust? And third, how do we then live believing as we do and trusting in Jesus as followers of Jesus? 
as I think about these and these two texts. The first reading from Acts, Peter and John are together, and they, what immediately precedes this is important too because they make reference to it. They have just come to the temple, and there is a man who is unable to walk, who has been carried to one of the gates of the temple, and he's there waiting to, to beg for people to give him something to, to, uh, to live on, and he's not able to earn his own living, so he's carried to the temple door uh, every, every time they, uh, he has some help to do that. And so Peter and, and John come to him, and, and they stop and pause, and he's, of course, expecting them to, to give him something of what he needs, some, some money probably, and, and so then they, they say, what is it you need? And he, he kind of looks at them a little bewildered because he didn't know what they were thinking. And so he said, uh, he, obviously he wanted to be healed so he could walk. He didn't really expect it, I'm sure. So this miracle took place and he was able to get up and to walk and to move around and, and I'm sure danced and was rejoicing. And so that was the, what preceded the reading from today. And so the setting for today is, is asking the people gathered who saw this miracle saying to them, what do you, how do you think this took place? Do you, you're thinking it was, it was uh, we, John and I, Peter, saying that, that was, we had the power to do this? And then Peter went on to say, no, it's the power of God, the power of the risen Christ that's in us, and was trying to get them to understand that it was by faith in Jesus that they were able to do this, that God's power came through them, that this man was able to be healed. And so it was helpful to come to the uh, understanding or the at least saying it was faith in Jesus, in the power of Jesus, not our, our power as well. We are not miracle workers in that sense, they were saying. And then as we look at the gospel, it's also important to, to know what... Uh, what is preceding the gospel? Well, in this gospel, we have the, uh, Jesus appearing before the disciples in the 24th path, pastor, uh, chapter of Luke, uh, verses 36 and following. And immediately before this, we have the account of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, a village outside of uh, Jerusalem, walking later in the day with two disciples. And they were on their way to Emmaus from Jerusalem, and Jesus walked along with them and overheard them talking about all the events of the past week. This was Easter evening. And so they, uh, he, uh, they kind of, he said, what, what all is sort of playing like you didn't really know, I suppose. Asked them a little more about it. They said, well, this is what happened. They said, you, you, you're the only one who doesn't know what has taken place. And so he went on and uh, and listened, and then it wasn't until they got to their destination, invited him to come in and have a meal with them, that they realized this was the risen Jesus, the risen Christ. And so then he disappeared from their presence, and they hurried back to tell the rest of the disciples. And then in the reading for today, Jesus appeared to all the disciples gathered, except uh, in this account, uh, it doesn't say much about Thomas, but he gathered with all of the, the disciples that they were still in fear. They were still uncertain about what would happen to them if they made known to the authorities that they were part of the following of Jesus. And so he appeared and said, peace be with you. And then he needed to let them know that he indeed was the same Jesus that was crucified. And so he said, have you got something to eat? And they gave him something and he ate it and showing that he was physically resurrected as well, not just a spiritual being. And so out of this, I pose these three questions, saying what do we or what do you individually really believe about the resurrection? We know what we say in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died, was crucified, was uh, 
descended to the dead, rose again from the dead, and ascended to be with God. And so we, that's in so many words, paraphrased. So we say that whenever we say the creed. That's what we believe and teach as Lutheran Christians. But the deeper question is, what do, what do you individually believe about the resurrection? You know, we live in kind of a high-tech scientific age, and so some people say, well, I believe in God. God created everything, and it's all great, and God is all-powerful, and yeah, I believe the Spirit of God is kind of among us, but they don't quite understand how Jesus fits into the Trinity, into the fact that Jesus, who was crucified, is now alive as well. And so the question gets to be for us. I think it's a good time to think about that. Just a couple of weeks after the resurrection, after we celebrated Easter, a resurrection that happened 2,000 years ago, it's a good time for us to think about that and to think about what it is that we believe about Jesus. Who is Jesus today? Who is Jesus in the Trinity, as we call it, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit? And how does that fit into our belief system as well? And then I, this, the other question I said is, what do we need to build trust? More trust in our, in our lives, in our faith, in God, in Jesus. I say that because in the book of Luke, the writer Luke Acts is much more, we say that we're fairly certain that Acts was the same writer as Luke. They fit together so well, but, but the book was really written from the direction of trust, building trust for the people. It wasn't written in a similar fashion as the Gospel of John, which is much more of a theological how did this happen? Why did it happen? Why was it necessary for Jesus to go to the cross? How did God bring Jesus into the world? And, and how does all this fit into the spiritual realm? That was much more John's approach and we heard from John last, the Gospel of John last week. And then so this reading today is a similar event, but it's written from the perspective of building trust, of helping the people to trust the risen Jesus is the one who is crucified, and he is alive by the power of God. And it's that power through the Holy Spirit that continues to motivate all of us, motivated the early followers to get out of that behind locked doors in their fear and get out and, and start witnessing for Jesus and start building the church that we know today, the early beginnings of Christianity way back then. And so the question for us is, the third question is, if we say we believe, which I would guess most of us do, we have some understanding of what we believe, then I would say, what do we need? The disciples behind locked doors, they needed to know that Jesus, yes, indeed was alive. In the Luke's account of this, they needed to know that Physically, Jesus was alive, and so he showed them, yes, I can eat the food you're eating. I can, here I am. Even though he had the, the, the power of God, the power to come and go freely and, and, and come into their sight and then uh, be gone again, he still was alive physically, the one who was crucified. And so that helped them to get the courage to open those locked doors and get out and begin witnessing for Jesus as well. And so I think the third question is important too. How do we then live as believing, trusting followers of Jesus? What the disciples do once their faith was restored, once they got rid of that fear that was holding them back, they went out and began to preach and teach. And yes, miracles happened as well through the power of God, through them. They were able to do that because they knew that Jesus is alive. They knew that this one who was to be their leader, who through their, his lifetime here on earth, they thought he would be like a king in our sense of understanding an earthly king. And yet he taught them and showed them that his kingdom was much different than the kingdoms of this world. And so they were doing these acts of kindness and caring and showing and including and, 
and they included all of the people. They didn't just go to the, to the chosen people of Israel, the Jewish, the Hebrew people at that time. They went to all of the people. The term used is Gentiles, anybody who wasn't a part of the Jewish uh, community. And they made it clear where Jesus had shown them always going to the ones on the margin, the ones who were not included in the circle of faith, the family of, of the church at that time, or the family of the Jewish synagogue at the time. And so in like manner, they reached out. Peter later discovered that the message was not just for the Jewish people, it was for all people. He discovered through a vision he had. And so that's where we are to be found. Think about the events happening daily and weekly in our lives, in our communities, in our, in our nation as well. The continued killing of unarmed people of color, especially the, the black people, the African-American people, that continues even though it's being challenged again and again and again and being visible now and much more so, and we, we, hear, the, we hear and see the, 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 the uh, events in, in Minneapolis where the, where the officers on trial after shooting uh, George uh, Floyd. And so we, even in the light of that, we still each week have more killings. And so we need to challenge that. We need to speak the truth to power in those times. And I don't have magic uh, formula about how we do that, but we need to think about that and find the appropriate ways. We need to be there for anybody who is being excluded and who is being not welcomed into our community totally, openly. It's not enough just to say, you're welcome. We need to reach out and, and maybe uh, take a hand or when you can and, and bring people uh, to what is needed uh, in different ways. And we found a lot of ways during this last year. It's been not an easy year, but through the creativity and the continued efforts of all of our people, we've done a good job in keeping in touch, keeping in contact, reaching out to a lot of people who wouldn't be a part of our uh, worshiping community and other activities were it not for the uh, way we're doing it now. But we'll, when we get back together, as we get back together, we need to sit down and say who's missing from our table, who's missing from our family, and then find appropriate ways to reach out as people have always done in these kinds of situations. And so as you think about this, these texts today, as you think about what it is that you believe and how you, what you need, whether it's uh, more information, whether it's more uh, visible evidence, whether whatever it is that you need to build more trust in God, in Jesus, so that we can let go of some of the things that we have no control over and we can build on those things that we can do something about. And how do we then live as believing, trusting followers of Jesus? How might it be different than it's been in the past? You know, this is a new time. Each day is a new opportunity. We are called to a new way of living, a new way of looking at life. It doesn't mean that we, the same way that we did two years ago or 30 years ago or as a child or as a young person, it means each day there are new ways of looking, looking at, at our faith, looking at how God is calling us to share the good news, to be a witness to the love of Jesus. And so I hope during this time, as you're uh, still in the Easter season, I hope it can be a time of reflection, renewal, and new trust and faith in God, the Creator, and Jesus, the Son, in the Holy Spirit among us. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join in our prayers for the church. Dear Lord, we come before you with hope and faith, praying for Bethel and our entire world. We pray for healing in our country, for social justice and racial equity. There continues to be police shootings and gun violence that needs a lasting solution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those impacted by war, violence, and ineffective governments. Help the leaders and communities find a way towards peace and a safer life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for what we hope is light at the end of the tunnel with the COVID-19 pandemic. We give thanks for vaccines, healthcare workers, researchers, hospitals, clinics, and doctors. We also pray for equity of vaccine distribution, as we know all people need the vaccine, and countries that have must share with countries that have not. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for education of our children, kids with their lessons, teachers navigating changing schedules and demands, and parents doing their best to juggle their kids' education, work, and their family life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for our Bethel community. Barbara, Renee, yes. Vinnie, Victor, our call committee, Melody, Gil, Lars, Betty, Melanie, Gail, Lou, and Shirley. And we take a moment to pray for friends and family not named. Gracious God, give us the wisdom to trust in you to lead a new pastor to shepherd us. We pray that our new pastor's heart will now be stirred, feeling, feeling the Holy Spirit's call to Bethel to love and care for us and challenge us with the gospel. Anoint the call committee with perception, imagination, and discernment, trusting you to be our guide. We bring our prayers to you, Lord, and pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To all our regular givers, you'll be receiving your quarterly update in the coming days. And to all of you out there, thank you for your financial support and the way you lift up the Bethel community in prayer. We definitely feel it. So as you enjoy this song by our Joyful Noise Handbell Choir, you'll see a link to the Bethel website with instructions for giving. Thanks again, and please enjoy. Now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace to never sell yourself short, grace to risk something big for something good, grace to remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Now let's get heated up and join in our closing song, Start a Fire. Have a great week, everyone.